Assalamu alaikum. We meet again. On this occasion, I thought perhaps it might be a good idea to speak a little bit about some of the parables in the Quran. One of them, which I find particularly interesting because it has some kind of a uh, um, it has some kind of meaning today. Well, it has meaning at all times, but today in particular is the story of Qarun. Now this Qarun, the story of Qarun as told in the Quran in uh, Surah Al-Qasas, I believe, is also mentioned in the English Bible, in the book of Numbers of the Old Testament. And in that book, he is referred to as Korah. So it's a famous story, it's a famous uh, uh, event. Now this man, Qarun, he lived during the time of the Prophet Musa, Moses. This was about 2500 BC, I suppose. Now, why is this story applicable even today? It's because of the the story in the Quran regarding this Qarun and how his arrogant, his avarice, his uh, rebellion caused him to be destroyed. This Qarun was a very wealthy man, extremely wealthy. He possessed, according to the Midrashim, this is the Jewish oral uh, tradition. The Midrashim, of course, they like to exaggerate the wealth of this Qarun and according to them, the keys to his wealth alone equal the weight of 300 mules. Of course, in the Quran, it's not as exaggerated as that. But still, nonetheless, in the, in the Quran, this Qarun is described as an exceedingly wealthy man. And the treasure that he possessed, the keys to the treasure that he possessed, had to be carried by at least 40 men. And this Qarun, wherever he went, whether it be on the trading route, or anywhere outside of Egypt, he would leave his wealth in Egypt and carry the keys with him to wherever he went. This was the kind of person that he was. And he had approximately 250, 300 followers who, ardent followers, who religiously, um, who religiously sat on every word that he said. Now this Qarun, he is the one who rose and he and his people they rose in rebellion against the Prophet Musa and his preaching and of course his brother Harun. Why? Because this Qarun, because he was so wealthy, he thought that his wealth and his fame and, and his position put him equal in terms of spirituality with the priests, certainly with the Prophet Musa. He thought that he was equal to them. After all, he was the kind of person that that uh, would burn incense in the, in, the, in, the, in the priest chamber that was reserved only for the priest. But he thought he was of equal rank, spiritual rank, because of his wealth, because of his fame, because of his uh, uh, position. And therefore he thought that why must the Prophet Musa be the one that is so celebrated? He, after all, is much wealthier. He is much more famous. His fame is known even outside of Egypt for being the, the wealthiest man, because he carried his keys all over wherever he went. He would have a train of, of, uh, of camels or mules carrying the chest which contained the keys to his wealth, which he kept in Egypt, didn't want to remove it from his beloved Egypt. Now, why are we telling this story or why is the Quran telling this story? It's because it's trying to warn the people, warn adherents to the religion, about the dangers of being arrogant, of being uh, of avariciousness, of being uh, haughty, of misusing your wealth, misusing your position. But that story apparently hasn't been understood in the context of today. Today we can see that there are lots of Qaruns in existence today, Muslims who are like Qarun. They believe that because they have money, because they have power, because they have fame, because they have achieved a, cer a certain celebrity, that they can sit on the shoulders of those who actually are far more nobler in position than them. And they go around bragging about their wealth, bragging about their position, bragging about their power, 
and they forget that this wealth, this money and this power, much like Qarun forgot, was supplied and allowed by Allah. Qarun believed that it was his own doing, that it was his own effort, his own work that got him all this wealth. Forgetting, of course, that Allah is the one that allowed him to have this wealth, allowed him to have this position, allowed him to have this fame. But he, he didn't even acknowledge Allah. He didn't even acknowledge God. He thought that everything was due to him. And because of this arrogance, in the end, he was destroyed. But if in the Quran, the story of Qarun is meticulously examined and that we take example from that and try to see what we can do in today's world, we can see there are lots of things. Now, in the story of Qarun, there are three things about Qarun. Number one, he was very wealthy, but he was a miser and he forgot all those which were due from him and the others around him to other people. In other words, he didn't know how to spend his money. He had lots of money, but he didn't know how to spend it. So he was a miser. That's number one. Number two, he forgot about the poor people, the needs of the poor. He forgot about them and he forgot about the good causes that he should be supporting, being charitable to or being philanthropic to. And by the way, this charity and philanthropy are not the same thing. They are two different things altogether. But we will get into that another time perhaps. And then thirdly, <coughs> because he didn't know how to spend his money, he misspent his money. And in misspending it, he misspent it on mischievous things. He caused a lot of mischief. He caused a lot of, of uh, problems for the Prophet Musa and for his brother Harun. And for this, for his arrogance, for his avarice, for the way he spent his wealth, for the way he forgot about how he became wealthy and how he got this wealth, and he forgot about how to be charitable and spend his wealth in a good way, for this, Allah destroyed him and his followers, their wealth, their houses, their everything. Everything was destroyed because of that arrogance and of course disobedience because whatever the Prophet Musa tried to preach and tried to give advice to, they would, re they would reject completely and not only reject, they would belittle, they would again cause mischief and cause people to hate what the Prophet Musa was talking about. And this is something that existed 2500 BC, which is about 4000 years ago. Therefore, those kind of problems, they are still in existence today. What more with the wealthy that we have amongst our people in Malaysia? We have lots of wealthy people, lots of wealthy Muslim, Muslims. But it would seem that these people, when it comes to spending their money in a good manner on, on, uh, on things which are philanthropic, on things which are charitable, without thinking of their own benefit, but rather with, of the benefit of the good deeds that they are doing, seems to be vacuous. I mean, we don't seem to have that in our society. We have a lot of these Qaruns. Remember, I said that from the beginning. Look at chiefly in the political realm. They have fame. They have enormous wealth. And they are arrogant because of the fame and the wealth. And they think that their position is what gives them authority and what gives them equal status to those who are of a nobler standing than them. This is what Qarun did. Then when it comes to their wealth and their money, how do they spend their money? Sometimes they are forced to spend their money. Forced, in other words, that the government makes them spend it on compensating the people who they, they misled. And that compensation is a drop compared to their enormous wealth. And even then, they are trying to make it sound as if they are very charitable people. We are not fools, though. When people like that give money and call it charity, what they are expecting is that it, the money comes back to them tenfold. 
and they are not they are not thankful to Allah. They don't say Alhamdulillah. They can build as many mosques as they want to, name the mosque after themselves. They can renovate all kinds of buildings. Again, pointing the finger to themselves that they did it, but they forget about Allah's gift to them. They do all these things because they want the government to look at them and give them contracts. And the government itself, those in the government who are also Qaruns, they are willing to do so because they want also to get kickbacks. Because they also want to be wealthy. They forget again. This wealth is afforded to you by Allah. He allows you to have this wealth. And because of that, He's giving you the responsibility to spend it in the right way. You cannot forget the needs of the poor. You cannot forget the needs of the, of the good, um, good causes of educational institutions of higher learning, for instance. You cannot forget also how to spend the money. And then if you misspend it, you should realize that too. But look at today. Today, there is so much mischief in the country. All of it is caused by the people who are like Qarun. All of them have positions, have some degree of fame, have some degree of celebrity, and their followers. Their followers now, I mean, it's not like in Qarun's time where there were 250 followers. Now it's in the thousands. The followers are in the thousands, and these are blind followers. These are people who are ignorant, who don't know. And like Qarun, his followers looked up to him as if he was a hero. They idolized him. They wanted to be like him. That's what we find today. We find the followers of these Qaruns like that. They look up to these people and want to be like them. They want to emulate them. They consider those people their heroes. They consider those people their idols. In Malay, they call it idola. How many times have we heard this before? So and so is my idola. Why? Because he's got lots of money. <coughs> Excuse me. Someone once asked me the other day, why are the Muslim countries so beholden to the West, it appears? And he said, is it possible that they are beholden to the West because we used to be a colony of the West? Although that is true, I feel that my view is Although we, we may be beholden to the West because of the colonization, but the colonization continues and it's done now by our own people. But why we are beholden to the Western world is because the Western world has all these fantastic wealth. And we want to be like them in terms of the wealth. We want to be able to spend or rather misspend like they do on wealth. They misspend their money a lot on things which are really not that important. And yet we look up to them and we consider them to be like heroes. We want to be like them. We want to emulate them. We also want to be wealthy like them. But we forget all of this wealth is given to us, is allowed to be given to us. Although we work hard, we struggle, and we get wealth. But again, it's because Allah allows us to have this wealth. We should not forget that. And we certainly should not forget the needs of the poor and the needy and the good causes which we should support. And this is something that in Malaysia is seriously lacking. Another very close person related to me that she had in fact asked the wealthy people, the Muslim wealthy, the Malays in this country to support her cause. None of them replied. None of them gave any money. The non-Muslims on the other hand, they gave freely. Why? Why do we have this disease? We are just like Qarun. Those people and their followers are just like Qarun. We should be aware of that. This is why we read the Quran. This is why the Quran tells us all these stories in the Quran. For us to reflect on these things, ponder. Don't be arrogant. Don't be puffed up. Don't think that your fame or your position or your wealth affords you a status higher than those who deserve it. Remember that. It is not money, it is not position, it is not fame that will give you a higher spiritual station. 
we are all going to be inhabitants at a certain grave at one point or in our life in our life at some point and don't think that because we have money because we have position we have fame that we can buy ourselves closer to the seat of the prophet it's not going to happen on the contrary your wealth your fame your position if you are not a good man if you do not look after the needs of the poor and of good causes and if you misspend your wealth and if you forget everything that is due to you comes from Allah all of that wealth that fame that position is going to destroy you and bury you just like Qarun these verses in the Quran are meant for people like you therefore you need to read that properly and understand it in today's world especially in in the Muslim world these are the kind of Qaruns we have in positions of power, in positions of authority, in positions of wealth. And yet all that they do is nothing but create mischief. They create a lot of tension in the Muslim world. Read the Quran, Surah Al-Qasas, and the Surah after that, Surah Al-Anqabut, I believe. Read the story of Qarun in the Quran there. Read what the Quran says about that. Now when it comes to charity, you are just supposed to give. That's what charity is, to give without expecting anything in return. Just give. Philanthropy, on the other hand, is where you educate. You give money for the purposes of educating so that they can better themselves. The people you give can better themselves. That is philanthropy. And in philanthropy, you expect a return. And that return is that the person you're giving the wealth to, or the money to, can actually make use of it in a beneficial manner so that he won't have to rely on you anymore so that somebody else can then rely on him to look after him it's like the english have a saying teach a man i mean uh, feed give a man a fish he eats for a day that's charity teach a man to fish he eats for a lifetime that is philanthropy how many of our muslim philanthropies do we have I mean real Muslim philanthropists, not one who pretend that they're philanthropists and who pretend that they have universities, pretend that they have institutions, but who in reality have not benefited people at all. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that's all I have to say for now. Let's reflect on the stories of the Quran, please. Thank you.